Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're doing something a little bit different. This is a coffee grinder review. Specifically, this is the Time More Chestnut C2 coffee grinder. I bought this um, from a place called Prima Coffee. I got to give them a, f a shout out because their customer service was incredible. Uh, I actually had called them about the Chestnut Slim from Time More and they talked me out of that after talking with them on the phone and they convinced me to get the cheaper version. Um, I think the Chestnut Slim runs like 140 bucks. I want to say that this Chestnut C2 ran about 85 and maybe it was 95 shipped to my door. But um, yeah, I spoke to someone named Allie over there. She was amazing. She actually said uh, that she was going to do like a little grinds comparison at her desk and, and to figure out which one would work best for me and my French press brew method that I'll be using when I travel with this grinder. Um, anyways, got to give a shout out to Prima Coffee there. They were they were great. So yeah, how often do you call a business and they talk you out of spending money? So I was pretty impressed with that. So anyways, let's uh, let's get into the box here and see what you get. I get a nice little travel pouch here, which is cool. Um, you get a little cleaning brush, which is something that I use more than I thought I would. And then you've got the uh, the grinder here, and then the lid. So yeah, that's basically that's what that looks like. So yeah, I'm going to I'm going to walk you through my brew process and I'm going to show you how this grinder sort of interacts with me and and what I do uh for a cup of French press coffee then I'm going to give you some some uh you know final thoughts. So let's get to it. We um need to set the grinder. So I'll show you how to do that re real quick. So you unscrew the bottom here, this catch cup. And then on the bottom, you can kind of see there's a there's an indicator on the bottom there. It goes from uh, fine to coarse with the rotation of the dial, so you can kind of see those circles. So if you crank this all the way down clockwise, you'll get to a point where it won't turn anymore. Yep, there we go. So this is a zero setting. Now if you click back, that's one setting. That's two settings. Three settings. Four settings. You get the idea. We're going to go to setting 22 because uh, I've kind of figured out that setting 22 for this medium roast coffee works really well. I like to weigh into the catch cup. That makes it a, a nice, easy transition into the actual sort of bean hopper itself. So we've got a, a Colombian here. We're going to we're going to weigh this out. Do 21 grams. I like 21 grams of coffee into 320 mL of water. That's about a 15 and a half to one coffee to water. Perfect. Alrighty. And then I like to put it so there's the top of that grinder. Just gonna do one of these. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, this holds about 21 grams. It says on their website they hold, it holds 25 grams. This, uh, maybe if it was like a super light roast, but yeah, you're holding, this is holding about uh, 20 grams, plus or minus. So then, catch cup is on. Put this on top, and yeah, we're ready to go. So the grinding action is is fairly smooth. It could probably be a little bit better. There's very much a sensation that this is a tool, and its tool is to grind coffee. Uh, this can rip through beans at about a gram per second, which is pretty quick. Um, if you're just kind of lollygagging with it, you can do uh, about a second and a half. Uh, per gram, but I recommend going a little bit slower. I found that when you really rip through the beans here, you get a kind of a wildly uh, uneven grind, and obviously that makes a poor cup of coffee. So we're going to kind of go like medium slow, just like that. All right, there we are finishing up. I give it a tap, and. Uh, Stays fairly clean, and there's our grinds. You can this this holds probably 25 to 30 grams of coffee grounds. Uh, let's take a look at the grind before we before we uh, put this in the French press. So again, this is setting 22, right? Yeah, setting 22. There are the grinds. I'll zoom in there for you. Actually, we are zoomed in. That's it. That's all you're going to get. But the grind is uh, 
it's fairly it's fairly good. It's fairly good. I, I see more fines out of this generally than uh, my my countertop Capresso Infinity, which is sort of my daily driver. Maybe I can get a little closer here and get a focus for you. So it's really not that bad. The grind is fairly fairly even. Could be better. I think it looks better. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So let's dump this in the French press and warm up some water. All right, 21 grams into the French press. We've got some hot water here at 200 degrees. We're putting this in. All right. Of course, it fogs up my lens, and we're going to start the timer. So while the coffee is brewing, I want to say uh, a couple things about this grinder, um, or point out a couple things. It's built from solid aluminum. Um, it seems like it's machined pretty well. The grinding action on this is, you know, smooth-ish. It just, it very much feels like a tool made for grinding coffee. There's, there's no, it's not buttery smooth, it just, it grinds coffee, and it, and it does, uh, it grinds very quickly, which is nice. You got a couple plastic bits here and there, like these sort of support beams in there, uh, whatever you call those, and then you got the handle, it's plastic. This is all heavy duty stuff, not a concern as far as longevity um, is, is, as far as longevity goes. All right, so we're done brewing. I like the James Hoffman uh, French press method. I think that yields exceptional results. Well, the technique does, depends on your equipment. So here we go, got my cycling cup. See how she tastes. It's good. It's not great. And um, that is something I've sort of noticed with this grinder. Um, I, get, I get good results, sometimes almost very good, but never great. It is, it is just sort of my opinion and my experience with this that it just will never make great coffee. And here, here's what I've sort of figured out. Um, I've, I've kind of checked out the grinds very closely at different settings. I see more fines than I'm used to seeing uh, in the middle part of the range. If you're talking about drip, pour over, uh, aero press, depends on your grind of course with that one. I see some more fines in that range which tends to muddy up the cup of coffee. And then when you get out to the French press settings of 22, 23, 24, um, I see some more boulders as well. And so for for instance, this cup, it has a bit of a bite to it, which would indicate that I've maybe over extracted a little bit, extracted a little bit of bitterness, but at the same time it tastes a little bit thin. So uh, that would also kind of indicate that I, uh, well I guess at the same time that would indicate that I, I should probably tighten up my grind. But it's an interesting thing with this grinder because, let me take another sip, I just get a hint of a bite. It's not bitterness, but it's not the smoothest cup of coffee that I've ever had. My Compresso Infinity on my countertop over there yields full flavored, smooth, great cups of coffee, and I have yet to have a truly great cup of coffee from the Timor Chestnut C2. It does a good job, not a great job. Um, and so if, if, you're, if you're doing sort of the AeroPress uh, drip coffee, maybe pour over. This is going to be a pretty good option for you, I think, for the money, maybe. I, I wish I had more experience with, with hand grinders to, to direct you in one way or the other. But as far as this goes, uh, it does a better job at the pour over range, not such a great job at the French press range. Um, I, I have seen uh, on the internets that uh, these guys have come out with a new burr. It's called the E and B burr, and uh, that stands for espresso and brew. Um, it's supposed to do a better job at the brewing. So that would be interesting to try. I don't know if I'll be holding on to this though. I'm not real impressed. You know, I, I don't like coffee enough to drink coffee that's just good. It's got to be great, right? So I got into coffee about a year ago after discovering sort of that specialty locally roasted hipster coffee. I was at a cycling event, went, to some, went with some buddies to uh, a local coffee shop after, and uh, just good coffee is good. That was sort of, my, uh, that was sort of my, my conclusion there, and I've been into it ever since. So, um, to wrap this up, I think the Time More Chestnut C2, it does a good job. It doesn't do a great job. I'm not super happy with it. Uh, it, it sort of is a little bit erratic in terms of its grind in the French press and in, in sort of the coarser region of the spectrum when you get down into the 
uh, pour over uh, you know Chemex settings of 18, 19. Um, it does a pretty good job. I still get more fines than I'm used to seeing in my grind, which subsequently makes the cups a little bit muddy in their flavor, which basically means that the flavors aren't quite as bright, they're not quite as clear, they're not quite as obvious. They just sort of are muddied together a little bit. But don't get me wrong, this will make a good cup of coffee, just not great. So anyways, hope you guys found this helpful. Uh, stay safe out there and uh, keep riding.